Hi, moderator. Um, Shelly, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I guess um, we figured it out with um, removing everyone off. Um, that being said, it's uh, since it's challenging for me to see if all the board members are back, I'd ask that you, um, I'm going to reconvene <clears throat> and then I will ask Dr. Paris to give me a roll call so that I know that we are present. And if Dr. Paris can bring his video up, please. Fantastic. So I'd like to reconvene the meeting. It's 2.22. We are reconvening after lunch. And I will ask Dr. Paris to give me a roll call because we are, I can't see who all is back from lunch. Uh, Dr. Dion McClain. I'm present. Dr. David Paris present. Dr. Lawrence Adams. Dr. Lawrence Adams. Present, but you're breaking up, Dr. Paris, a little bit. Can you hear me okay, Dr. Adams? I I am present, and I, uh, Dr. Paris, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah, I took my video off. I think the bandwidth's low right now for us. Miss um, Jeanette Cruz. Present. Dr. Pamela Daniels. Present. Mr. Raphael Sweet. Present. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you, Dr. Paris. With that being said, we'll move on to agenda item number six, the, an update from the Department of Consumer Affairs. I'd like to um, invite Deputy Director Carrie Holmes to come forward and uh, bring that update to us. Good afternoon, Chair McLean and board members. I am Carrie Holmes, Deputy Director of Board and Bureau Relations at the Department of Consumer Affairs. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to provide a department update. First of all, Happy New Year and thank you. DCA appreciates all board members and staff who have continued to serve through a pandemic that has affected all of us in many ways. To combat the spread of COVID-19 and protect vulnerable communities, California has implemented enhanced safety measures. State employees must show proof of vaccination or be subject to regular COVID-19 testing. The California Department of Public Health is requiring masks to be worn in all indoor public settings until February 2022, regardless of vaccination status. DCA's testing program kicked off in early October at DCA headquarters and has expanded to additional sites and home testing. We are working together to find the right balance of staying connected and productive while keeping safe and healthy. DCA and all its boards and bureaus continue to look to the future and use lessons learned to identify long-term efficiencies and policy changes. Staff are working in the office to provide the most effective consumer protection and customer service while utilizing telework where appropriate. DCA recognizes the difficulty of planning for future meetings as the pandemic continues to evolve. On January 5th, Governor Newsom signed an executive order that extends the sunset date in Assembly Bill 361. Under this new order, boards are permitted to continue holding public meetings via WebEx without listing board member locations through March 31st, 2022. Additionally, Sacramento County issued a local order on January 6th directing public boards, committees, and similar public bodies to suspend any in-person meetings that might otherwise be held within Sacramento County and hold them remotely. After March 31st, we do expect that meetings will resume in person in accordance with the Opens Meeting in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. Before attending an in-person board meeting, members must verify full vaccination with DCA's Office of Human Resources or participate in COVID-19 testing. Board members, please don't wait until the next in-person meeting is planned. DCA requests that all members submit their vaccination verification by January 31st if you plan to do so, 
to allow enough time to plan COVID-19 testing for those who need it. I want to express my appreciation for the flexibility of board members and staff. We don't know what additional changes to the law may be coming and we will keep you updated. Whether meeting remote or in person, DCA wants to keep your board fully seated with excellent members and diverse voices. Currently, the board has one vacancy, a licensee to be appointed by the governor. DCA's communications team recently released a new communications toolkit to assist boards with member recruitment available in multiple languages. Board members can also encourage individuals to visit board member resources on DCA's homepage to apply for an appointment. As a reminder, board members have training and paperwork requirements. Each year, board members are required by law to file a Form 700 before April 1st or face penalties from the FPPC. DCA requests that you file as soon as possible. And as a tip, I'll let you know that the best way to avoid lots of reminder emails and calls is to file early. DCA's filing officer and legal counsel are available to assist. Board members who are recently appointed need to attend board member orientation training within a year of that appointment date. You can register for the BMOT through the Learning Management System or LMS, which is DCA's training portal. Live virtual trainings will be held on March 9th, June 15th, and October 12th. This is a required training for newly appointed and reappointed members, but we also encourage it for any member who seeks a refresher. Board and Bureau Relations is happy to assist you with any questions you have about BMOT or the use of LMS. As always, Board and Bureau Relations is here to help. If there's anything I can do, please reach out. This concludes my presentation and I will hand it back over to Chair McLean. Thank you so much, Deputy Director Holmes, for that information. Um, and we appreciate all of your assistance in as we navigate these uh, waters and and changes and being flexible with us as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chair McLean. Yes. This is Dr. Adams. I missed the large portion of of um, the last comments, probably 30 seconds into um, Carrie Holmes comments I missed. So I don't know if there's going to be a transcription of what of her comments. It should be a part. I don't know if anybody else had it break up, but I was. Let me just ask. Um, is there anyone else having issues? Because I know that we're, we might be experiencing some bandwidth issues. Um, and that being said, Dr. Adams, you might want to log out and log back in. That helped my issues out that I was having. And we can wait for you to do that if you are so inclined. If no one else is having any issues except um, Dr. Adams, is anyone else um, having any issues? Any of the other board members? This is the moderator. It appears that our connection, at least through WebEx, is clear as our uh, closed captioning is picking what well, picked up uh, Ms. Holmes' entire presentation. So I believe the issue might be a bandwidth issue at Dr. Adams' end. Okay. So, Dr. Adams, would you like to try to log out and log right back in um, and see if that helps because it looks like it's on your end? I think what I'll do is uh, go to go to the closed captioning and see if that works. And Chair McLean, if I may, um, I I can also send a written version of my report uh, to board staff, and that way it can be uh, provided to the board members as well. That would be fantastic. Um, thank you so for so much for that, Ms. Holmes. Of course, Director Holmes. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Um, so that will suffice, um, I'm certain, for everyone. That being said, we'll move on. Um, again, for those who are not speaking, we'll stay off um, video as much as possible, except me. Um, I will remain on video um, I'm, and on and off video accordingly um, and um, anyone who is bringing forth any 
reports or information. If you you can turn on your camera, it's just helpful identifying who's talk, who's speaking, and especially once we open it up for discussion or questions, um, that would be helpful. Okay, so moving on. Um, and again, we so appreciate um, the DCA and and the support that we receive from the DCA. Moving on, I would like to um, just moving on to agenda item number seven, the chair's report. First, I'd like to congratulate Kristen Walker on becoming the acting executive officer while we commence our search for permanent EOs since the retirement of Mr. Puglio in December. There have been many accomplishments of the board. And in my last report, which was just in December, I spoke about many of those. Um, so I will try to just give you a few little highlights uh, to, as, as a reminder, um, as well as um, just some reflections. Our continued successful, uh, one of the highlights that I want to just really um, go back to is our continued successful collaboration with OIS in the business modernization project called Connect, which and also which now enables us to um, accept online initial license applications, renewals, address changes, cancellations of satellite certificates. It also allows acceptance of online payments, of online complaints, enforcement process like citations, fines, discipline and probation monitoring, and more. We are looking forward to including more continuing ed applications, more robust reports, tracking and quality control, which will streamline the workload for staff, improving the efficiency of work and enabling the board the ability to evaluate and compare data more readily, given giving us a broader picture of what's going on. We are working towards um, We are working towards improving training and improving quality, the quality of subject matter experts, continuing ed providers, and the continuing ed standards. Over the last eight years, I've been a part of those, this board, and that there have been great strides and accomplishments. My previous colleagues and I have worked diligently to reestablish standards, quality, and restore respect and integrity in the board, which previously had been uh, a little uh, aloof. This board has been um, in transitions and has endured transitions and challenges, and we have endured and overcome them. We have disagreed without being disagreeable, and understand that just because we don't agree, that doesn't mean that we are not hearing your perspective. So there is often an appearance that, that there's often been times where the, those opinions are given forth over and over again. And just to remind everyone that they, oftentimes that is not something that is necessary. Recognize that you don't accomplish anything by barreling in, in like a bull in, chi in a china shop. There are processes and procedures to properly affect a change. And we encourage and look forward to working to do that. I've humbly and proudly served in every capacity of the board and on each and every committee, task force, or what in many situations that I was asked and wherever I was needed without complaints. Recognizing that my appointment to the board was to serve the people and not serve myself, nor a personal agenda, nor what may be fiscally beneficial to me, but to serve 
to the in the best interest of the people of this great state as the governor's appointment requires. So let us conduct ourselves in a manner that veers away from behaviors that give the appearance of conflict of interest or self-serving and instead commit ourselves to being ultimate in the service to the people and to the public in an honorable, courteous, professional and ethical manner. I say to you today to remember service is about sacrifice, not selfishness. And I ask you, I leave you with this. Pause and ask yourself, how will you serve? As we move forward to agenda, the next agenda item, um, I, I just realized that I did not ask for public comment. Dr. McLean, it looks like you're having some bandwidth issues and we weren't able to hear the rest of your statement. Public comment on which item? On agenda item number six. Okay. Can you hear me now? I'll I'll stay off video. We can. Okay. Yes. Agenda item number six. And again, I'd like <laughs> to remind the public um, that um, as stated in the beginning of the meeting, and for those who weren't here, we will reserve or limit the public comment to two minutes unless otherwise we determine that there needs to be a longer comment. But moving forward, just to remember to respect the two minute limit on your comments. Thank you. And with that, we have opened the Q&A panel, which is our source for public comment for this meeting. If you'd like to make a comment, please click on the Q&A icon on your screen. Typically located in the lower right corner, it looks like a question mark inside of a square. You click on that, it should open a text box. And in that text box, you can simply type the word comment and submit that to our panelists. Okay, and Dr. McLean, not seeing any requests for comment, would you like me to close the panel? Yes, please. It is closed. Then I'd like to move on to agenda item eight, the acting executive officer's report. Ms. Walker, would you go ahead and take it from there? Sure, thank you. And I'm going to turn on my video, but if there's any um, connection issues on anybody's end, please let me know and I'll jump off video to preserve some bandwidth. Um, so good afternoon. I'm going to keep today's update brief as I highlight any notable changes since our last board meeting on December 16th. Um, first update is on the administration program. Um, the board currently has six staff vacancies at different levels from office technician through the executive officer position. Recruitment efforts are underway to permanently fill the enforcement manager and cashier positions and the board has appointed a search committee to fill the executive officer vacancy. The impact of these vacancies has been partially mitigated through the cross training of staff and the use of temporary help, including seasonal clerks and retired annuitants to fulfill our main business functions. This month, the department's solid training and planning solutions and staff began preliminary work on the board's next strategic plan. The next step is to conduct an environmental scan through a stakeholder survey board member interviews and a staff focus group, followed by an analysis of the results. Later in today's meeting under agenda item 15, the board will be asked to set a date for the strategic planning session that will be facilitated by SOLID as part of the strategic plan process. Moving on to continuing education, included in my report in the meeting packet are some statistics regarding the board's continuing education program. Um, of note in December, the board received 352 CE course applications and as of the end of the year had 387 applications pending review. There are two pending CE provider applications, which we reviewed later today under agenda, agenda item 14. As far as enforcement, 
The enforcement program continues to focus on investigating and closing complaints. At the end of the year, there are 424 pending complaints, which is consistent with our average workload this fiscal year. The number of pending disciplinary cases also remains high at 115, primarily due to PC23 matters after licensee arrests and a pending accusation workload caused by the COVID pandemic. Um, and also under enforcement, our enforcement extra expert recruitment announcement is expected to be posted by next Friday, February 4th. We've been delayed from our initial target of January 3rd due to staff vacancies and the need to make the application materials ADA compliant prior to posting them on the website. The other timeframes for this recruitment effort will be adjusted accordingly. As far as licensing, the California Doctor of Chiropractic license app population has continued to steadily decline by about 20 to 40 licensees each month this fiscal year. Um, and that's also consistent with what we've seen um, over the past few years. Uh, the pass rate for applicants taking the California chiropractic law examination this fiscal year is about 79%. And on average, the board's processing times for complete applications in the first quarter of this fiscal year are 11 days for doctor of chiropractic licenses, four days for satellite certificates, and 12 days for corporation certificates. Are there any questions on this portion of my report? I actually have a couple of questions, Ms. Walker. Um, just kind of going backwards here. Um, in the report, um, the and we spoke about it in the last meeting, the record keeping requirements. Um, I know that enforcement is working on that and it says that in future meetings of 2022, but do we have an estimate of which quarter in 2022 that we can anticipate that? Um, ideally, we would be taking that back for discussion at the next enforcement committee meeting, um, which would be or maybe early spring. We'd like to get that scheduled within uh, within the next quarter. Um, regarding the audits, um, there's the audits, re the report says that there's a 15.4% and I just um, wanted to see if we have information of how that compares to previous years. And I know that the aberration is the pandemic years, but this is, you know, 17, 18 through 19, 20. Right. So I could bring back um, some additional data if, if you're interested in seeing prior fiscal years. It's it's pretty comparable with what we've seen over the last few years when the board increased the efforts of auditing and then the pandemic hit um, and then we temporarily suspended the audits. But if, you, if you'd like additional data, I can certainly gather it. I think that um, I just wanted to know um, if it was comparable, you know, just given what we've seen, if it's comparable, if it's staying steady, if it's, it, you know, something that's significantly decreased um, or increased. So that's sufficient. A um, couple of other things. Um, regarding the complaints and, and citations, you did go over citations, right? Am I getting ahead of you? Um, I didn't go over citations specifically. Um, I kind of grouped them in when I was talking about okay. complaints, but I'm happy to answer any questions about citations. So my my question is um, that the um, fiscal year 1920, how is it that we jumped to 111 um, versus 28 and 34? Is that just, what do you uh, credit that to? That's primarily the outcome of the failed CE audits. So when we ramped up and began con auditing about 10% of licensees for their continuing education, we were finding in the ballpark of 10 to 15% of licensees had failed to audit. Those failed audits then turn into enforcement complaints that are generated by board staff, and then ultimately uh, make their way to being either citations or letters of admonishment for the most part. So that's the main driver right there on why there was an increase. It was just moving those failed CE audits through the workflow. Very good, thanks. Um, one last thing. One of the, the um, 
recommendations from FCLB and some of the other national organizations who um, have done some research is that we do um, quality research within ourselves on what whether our practice, what we're doing, the changes that we're making, um, are they May, are they correlating with changes in the statistical information that we have? And um, so that's just something that I would like to suggest that we um, put on future agenda item uh, as a future agenda item or that we talk about at some point, how are we doing related to um, changes that we've made? Because as you said, once we ramped up um, more information like what you just said, as once we ramped up citation, I mean audits, we saw more citations, but specifically implementation of, uh, of some of the other things that we're doing and what kind of effect is that having? And I think that's it for me. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on this portion of the report? I'm not hearing any, so um, I'd like to proceed to the budget and fund condition update. Um, at the last meeting, the board received a presentation of the fee study findings and also an update from the department's budget office. Um, the meeting packet contains an updated fund condition report as of January 11th, 2022. There have not been any major changes to this since the last update um, at the December 16th board meeting. The board's budget remains imbalanced and based on current projections, um, we're gonna have under three months in reserve at the end of this fiscal year. And without any changes, insolvency would likely occur in fiscal year 2023-24. Um, staff had met with the department's budget office recently on January 14th, and we're continuing to work closely with them on this situation. Are there any questions on the budget? I'm sorry um, if I missed it. Sorry, <laughs> Ms. Walker. So we did discuss last time um, the recommendations from the study, and I don't know if um, you mentioned or already if you already answered this, but do we, um, given that the budget situation seems to be of urgency, do we have an idea of when we'll be able to implement some of the recommendations from the um, study that was done? some of the changes in, in um, improving the budget? So uh, we're currently undergoing the sunset review process. So um, that's gonna be one of the issues that we're bringing before the legislature for their review. And I'm also working closely with the budget office to see if there's another avenue um, for either a potential fee increase or ways to, to further cut our costs to eliminate this imbalance. nothing further. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, moving on to the third portion of my report, um, the, an update on the business modernization project and implementation of the Connect system. Um, as I shared at the last board, me board meeting, the last major update to the Connect system occurred on November 22nd, 2021, when we added the rest of our enforcement functionality to the system. Um, staff has continued to work with Department's Office of Information Services, as well as the vendor on system refinements, and also to implement the next project phase, which will involve um, continuing education functionality. Are there any questions on the status of this project? Okay, um, hearing none, I'm going to move on to the final um, portion of the report is a, is a status update on the board's pending rulemaking packages. And with that, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm, I'm getting major bandwidth issues. I think I'm going to probably have to log out and log back in if you'll indulge me for just one minute. Sorry about that. I'm missing most of your presentation. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Walker. Walker. Okay. I'm also going to turn off my video just in case that'll help.
So, um, Shelly, could he just dial in from his phone to hear the portion? He can. And I can still promote him if he calls in so he could still be a panelist. Oh, I think he logged out anyway. We'll see what his connection is like when he logs back in. Dr. Adams, are okay, you I'm back. Can us? everybody hear me? We can. Can you hear us? Can hear you. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Dr. Adams, the portion that you may have missed was just the budget update and um, the update on the status of the Connect project. Um, both of those, there's been no considerable changes since the last board meeting. Did you have any questions on those two items? Um, did you discuss uh, it relative to uh, the budget and increasing fees? I know there was a study that was done uh, that we talked about the last board meeting and about the fee increases. Is that something that's on the horizon? Potentially, it's something that we'll be discussing through the sunset review process. And I've also been working with the budget office on pursuing other avenues uh, to directly implement that change. So that's something that'll be um, discuss with the board at a uh, future board meeting. Thank you. Okay, and for the final portion of my report, um, I'm going to ask that the board's policy analyst, Andrea McMillan, please provide the board with an update on the status of our pending rulemaking packages. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, so I will be providing a brief that is update on the board's pending regulatory proposals. So as you may know, we currently have multiple proposals in various stages of completion, as you can see in the uh, regulation tracking sheet um, that's in your board meeting um, a packet, attachment six. Um, I'd like to let you know that we have a number of packages that are currently under internal review. Um, and some of those um, are consumer protection enforcement initiatives that we have talked about at our previous um, board meeting. The delegation of authority to the um, assistant executive officer, that's another one. And lastly, the curriculum requirements regulation. So those are currently under internal review. And I also wanted to let you know that our goal this year um, is to progress through um, high priority rulemaking files and complete them as quickly as possible. He wants to focus on um, you know, completing these packages that we've had for a little while and hopefully we can notice them as soon as possible. Um, so this is really all I had to, uh, you know, um, say um, as far as my update today goes. And um, it, this concludes my portion of the update um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any further questions or discussion from board members? Seeing none, moderator, can you open it up for public comment? This is the moderator. We've again opened that Q&A panel. If you'd like to comment on this report, please click on that Q&A icon on your screen, type comment into the text field, and submit that to our panelists. Dr. McLean, not seeing any comments, requests at this time, would you like me to close the panel?
Uh, yes, please. Sorry, it was. It's okay. Not working. It is please. <laughs> Thank you. Moving right along, I'd like to move forward to agenda item number nine. Discussion regarding the board. Uh, so weigh in on available options in response to the January 11th, 2022 waiver. Uh, originally, this was a um, request regarding the waiver that expired, but since between meetings, that situation has changed. And so now, um, Kristen, do you want to um, chime in here or? I'd be happy to provide a little bit of brief background information and then return it to the board for discussion. Thank you. Okay. Um, the board's current continuing education regulations require licensees to complete 24 hours of continuing education, including the six mandatory hours to renew an active license with limited ex exceptions. California Code of Regulations, Title 16, Section 361, Subdivision C, limits licensees to a maximum of 12 hours that may be completed through distance learning as defined in California Code of Regulations, Title 16, Section 363.1, which identifies distance learning formats as including, but not limited to, computer, internet, manuals, compact discs, digital video, versatile discs, and audio and video tapes. On, December, on September 23rd, 2020, the Director of the Department of Consumer Affairs issued DCA waiver DCA 2063, which waives California Code of Regulations, Title 16, Section 361, Subdivision C, to the extent that it limits to 12 hours, the maximum number of CE hours that may be completed through distance learning, subject to the condition that distance learning in excess of 12 hours must consist of internet or web-based courses that allow participants to concurrently interact with instructors or presenters while they observe the courses. The board has been referring to this format as interactive video conference. On, on November 22nd, 2021, the DCA director issued DCA waiver DCA 21203, which terminated this order on December 31st, 2021. However, on January 11th, 2022, the director issued DCA waiver DCA 22209, which withdrew and superseded the November 22nd order and set a new termination date of March 31st, 2022 for this waiver. The department has been working to wind down the use of waivers and continues to encourage DCA boards and bureaus to look at the laws and regulations that were waived, determine if statutory or regulatory changes are needed in the future, and if so, move forward with such changes. At this meeting, the board is asked to discuss this matter and specifically the termination of DCA waiver DCA 2063, on March 31st, 2022, and consider making a motion. Thank you. Is there any discussion or comment from board members? Yes. Um, yeah. Am I being heard? Yes, yes, you are. I'm I'm missing a lot of what's going on. I apologize for um, something must be going on on my end. So um, I missed a lot of what. Uh, uh, Executive Officer Walker was commenting on it. it I, I think this is uh, the uh, the item as I've reviewed it about the waivers that have been extended. And in my conversations with uh, with staff, it appears that the um, the DCA is expecting us as a board to to act. And it seems as though the the best course of action and probably the quickest is to do a single item um, and uh, address distance learning and more specifically define it. 
and instruct the staff um, to create regulatory language that more specifically defines distance learning, which is probably the uh, most appropriate and easiest fix and quickest from what I understand to uh, resolve this uh, going forward and the issue of the waivers. And perhaps um, executive off, acting executive officer Walker, you could shed some light on that if, if, if that's um, uh, an accurate uh, assessment. So the board has a few options for proceeding. Um, the board's licensing and CE committee has been working on comprehensive updates to the board's CE regulations to expand the background check for CE providers and align the mandatory categories with the core competencies necessary for licensees to safely practice in California. As part of this, as part of this effort, um, the committee has been discuss discussing the definition of distance learning in that issue. Um, so there's a few different options for how the board wishes to proceed. Uh, they could continue with the comprehensive update to the CE regulations, um, or they could refer the matter to the licensing and CE committee um, to consider some sort of single issue regulatory change, which is what it sounds like you're suggesting, Dr. Adams, um, to uh, amend the definition of distance learning. And the board can, al can also take a look at um, the regulations on um, ex exemptions from the CE requirement to see if there's anything that would be appropriate there. Are there any other comments um, from board members, but regarding this issue um, presently? Yeah, hi, it's uh, Dr. Daniels. I had a couple comments. I, so I agree, I think we um, need to redefine uh, what distance learning means. I think our current definition is a bit antiquated and uh, it does appear that the single issue regulation would be the most expedient uh, way to resolve it. Um, there's definitely some randomized control studies out there on the effectiveness of um, outcomes with uh, synchronous learning. And so I feel like it needs to be uh, revisited as a more permanent solution. Thank you. Any anyone else? Uh, that means is, it. Oh, go this ahead. This is Dr. Paris. I I I think Sorry, I'd like to make seat. a motion to move this to the continuing education licensing committee. Um, feel free. Uh, motion to uh, move this issue to the. Licensing and Continuing Education Committee. I just I, can't. Oops, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was, I was just going to add, which I believe, just to state, um, I believe has a upcoming meeting scheduled for, is it the 9th of February? Somewhere in there. Yeah. It's coming up pretty quickly. Within, yeah, within, within four weeks. So I'd second that motion. Um, I, I think that we have um, been addressing distance learning uh, for quite some time now uh, as, as far as the information that's received and um, there's a variety of information on that we should continue, that we have evaluated previously, that we continue to receive from both schools, national organizations, et cetera, um, that we are bringing forth. And um, that being said, I will second that motion. Is there any further discussion before? And I'd like to call for the vote, vote Dr. Paris, on that. Madam Chair, Actually, can we ask for public comment? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Most important. Uh, I actually um, have, I actually have further, I actually have comment, further comment. Okay. Um, Hello. I okay. think one of the issues at hand here, I think one of the issues at hand here is, is the timeliness um, 
this waiver will end on the 31st, which will kind of bring us back to the same issue um, relative to the distance learning and the in-person learning, which has been somewhat of a concern that has been brought up before the board in the past. Um, I think that a delay when we have an opportunity, from my understanding, that we can address this one issue and still do the more comprehensive CE changes within the CE committee, but to get this ball rolling um, with the OAL and do a singular issue makes the most sense to address what the DCA is asking all the boards to do, including ours, to address this issue, which is, in my opinion, long overdue. Um, and I think just pushing it further down just delays it that much further. We've already decided in the CE committee that that we feel that uh, distance learning via Zoom has been a valuable tool and it's going to be part of the future CE um, requirements. At least the last time I was at a CE meeting, there was a high degree of agreement on that. And it seems that we have a path here given to us by the uh, acting, acting executive officer that we could take that one issue and address the uh, the regulatory language for distance learning and define it as asynchronous self-paced learning. And that would clear that issue up. And going forward, we can still deal with the comprehensive issues that we're dealing with with CE, which are going to take far longer than March 31st. And it saves us having to address this later on and our stakeholders and licensees that are facing concern about meeting in person. Um, so that's my uh, my opinion on that. And I'd like to make a counter motion if I can that we that we First, do that. Um, let, if I'm allowed, if I'm allowed to do that, I think we need to um, go for go forward and hear public comment, and then we can deal with the motions. I don't. Um, necessarily agree that that is the only path forward. We have talked at length and um, that's not necessarily uh, true that uh, if I'm hearing correctly um, <clears throat> regarding the continuing ed committee and us deciding we, we have determined that there it will be that distance learning will be a part of of uh, the continuing ed, but we have not determined that it would be distance learning um, all continuing ed. We have not come to an agreement that all continuing ed would be available and uh, uh, able to do that via distance learning. Um, there's, it, I think it is more appropriate for the continuing ed committee who has the historical perspective on all that has been discussed um, regarding these definitions. And um, I don't think that, um, that, that it is accurate to think that uh, any, any additional regulation can be pushed through swiftly. I think that what, whether it's an isolated uh, issue or not. I think that we have to be careful and concerned with accurately and uh, making sure that we adequately look at what we're putting forth in language of regulations versus rushing something through. Um, given given the, the example of being um, concerned with COVID, as we know that COVID um, is going to wax and wane, and um, that that is one of the reasons that these waivers that have been put forth have been temporary because it is the position of the govern governors, the governor, as well as um, public health that that given the proper protocols, it is not um, the extenuating. Um, risk that has been reported. Um, so I'd like to, at this time, ask for public comment and open it up for public comment and remind the public that 
to limit your uh, input to two minutes so that um, in accordance with our guidelines from the beginning of the meeting. Madam Chair, um, Dr. McLean, do you, yes. do you mind if I add to the discussion from the board before we go to public comment? Certainly. Just to continue this discussion? Sure. Um, I would say I think just as a, a point of order, if, if we were to have had um, an agreement from the committee, it would be in front of us um, as a recommendation from the committee um, on our agenda. So I know that we had discussions that were favorable to um, you know, the realities of using Zoom. And I would agree with my fellow board members that there's, there is surely um, into the future a place for uh, you know, distance learning through multiple avenues, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous as those are defined. Um, and, but I, I don't know that, that what was implied that we had come to some decision in the committee on this was necessarily uh, completely accurate about, you know, any specific top subject here. No, um, you're right. And I, I would say that the order as it currently has been extended would mean that the earliest uh, licensees that that might be faced with um, a having to do face to face and correct me if I'm incorrect would be those with a April 31st um, uh, renewal date. And so, so let me just make a a, a correction of uh, a discussion that I had is that um, those just because that is your um, your um, anniversary or that your continuing ed is required does not mean you have to wait until then to do it. Uh, while the waiver's in place, anyone is free to get their uh, continuing ed credits done now. So that should not be an issue. I, Thank you for all. clarifying that. Um, and I would also state too that I think there's a lot of um, moving parts to this, um, you know, beyond just uh, making this a permanent change forever. So I think it's really best discussed uh, and brought through the committee just so we can really have the, you know, give it the valuable time that it deserves. It would be a major change to continuing education. And I think everybody realizes that. And um, I would also remind that we were, pl were planning on a February 9th um, uh, continuing education meeting. So it's, it's it, you know, looking at the calendar, from my view, it's not like we're um, kicking the can, you know, too far. It's just a, a few weeks away and um, time to, you know, prepare and have that discussion then. But I just want to mention that before we go into public comment. Agreed. Um, I, I concur with you. It absolutely is two weeks away. It does give us time to get, continue to gather whatever additional information as well as take into consideration those things that were just given to us as well as I think that is more appropriate um, because we have, as, as stated, the committee has not um, voted on or taken a position or even uh, talked about language to bring forward to the board. I think the committee needs to bring the language forward to the board and then um, that be decided or, or voted upon. So thank you um, for that information. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask the moderator if you will open it up for public comment. This is the moderator. Our Q&A panel is open. If you'd like to make a comment, please submit that request through this panel. Clicking on that Q&A icon, type and comment into the text field and submitting that to our panelists. As a reminder, you will have two minutes to present your comment. Our first comment comes from Mike Robertson. Mike, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. You will need to click the unmute me button that appears at your end and wait for the recording to stop. I see that you are unmuted. Mike Robertson, can you hear us? I 
I will circle back. Uh, Steve Eggleston, I've sent you a request to unmute your microphone. Can people hear me now? We can hear you. Great. I'm an, uh, I'm licensed both as a chiropractor and an attorney in uh, the state of California. I've been a chiropractor for 31 years. I've been an attorney for 14 years. During those 14 years as an attorney, I've done all of my continuing education online. The bar has set uh, things in place to make sure that people are participating. The uh, presentation stops and pauses every a uh, certain number of minutes or at a random number of minutes to make sure that the participants are actually there and not um, off somewhere. And uh, it's a system that's worked just fine. I just completed my 25 hours of legal continuing education a week or two ago and everything went fine. I think chiropractors should uh, do it the same way that the uh, California bar does it for all of the attorneys in California. Thank you. Our next comment comes from Marcus Strutz. Marcus, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. Marcus, I see you are unmuted. And just to let you know, if you are connected by both computer and phone using your phone for your audio connection, you will need to make sure that both devices are unmuted. Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, hello everyone. Um, yes, and as most of you know, I've been a big advocate of Zoom online for the last year and uh, have lots of data that I've sent you uh, probably more times than I needed to. Uh, I think that's fine if you have a meeting February 9th. My only concern is just what Dr. McLean was referring to um, is the deadline is March 31st. And yes, everyone can take it before March 31st. Uh, but as of April 1st, then that's no longer an option. So um, whether COVID still here or not, or he comes back in the fall or the winter, who knows? Uh, but that's my biggest concern is uh, there enough time from February 9th to get this pushed through the OAL. Uh, by April 1st, and that would be my uh, one giant concern. I think everyone else is pretty much on board uh, with the idea of Zoom. I know there's a few uh, things that I've shared with uh, Kristen Walker, uh, the acting executive officer in terms of verbiage that I know have been shared with the board as well. So a lot of that groundwork has been done. So the meeting could be uh, relatively simple and straightforward and just answering some of the things that Dr. McLean and Dr. Paris are concerned about which are valid. So anyway, I'm uh, glad we're moving forward on this and it's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to circle back uh, to Mike Robertson. Mike, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. All right, did I get it fixed that time? We can hear you now. Perfect. Sorry about that. My mic wasn't pairing. Um, yeah. The, it seems like you have a, a couple of issues ahead of you. One is um, has already been solved by some other states. Uh, the state of Texas handled has handled their all of their online or their CE online for a number of years, and they just differentiate um, the live hours as being synchronous hours, are equivalent to butt in chair, like your twelve hours now, and then the other hours, like your other twelve hours that you have in you know a decade ago's version of remote learning. So just a, a suggestion that there are other states that have, have um, solved this already and they're many years into the solution that uh, it might be worthwhile looking at the language and some of their administrative coding uh, as you move forward with the committee. And uh, thank you guys so much for your work on the board. It's a kind of a thankless job. So appreciate you. Thank you. Our next comment comes from Cliff Tao. Cliff, I've sent you a request to unmute your microphone. Hi, uh, my name is Cliff Tao. I'm a licensed chiropractor in California. I just wanted to just briefly echo what 
Dr. Eggleston, Dr. Strutz, and uh, more recently Dr. Robertson said, it, you know, we there are different boards and different states uh, within California that that have uh, provisions for these live hours, and also that we, uh, I think, time is of the essence in in pushing this through. Considering our next meeting is uh, not till early April, and uh, that the waiver uh, expires at the end of March. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And our next comment comes from Victor Tong. Victor, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. A provider. I just want to um, say that whenever there is an interruption of this uh, waiver with this termination waiver and then we enact it, it causes a lot of disruption to all those who try to organize seminar events because each time we plan, we don't plan it one week at a time. We plan several months ahead so that we can make booking in hotel arrangements for speakers. And whenever they flip flop it like that, it causes us a lot of turmoil and a lot of major revision. And it is not like, okay, it's only a week away, you know, no big deal. For the participant, it might be no big deal. They could have done the waiver uh, under the waiver long ago. But for us, as CE Salmon provider, we wasted a lot of money just to put an advertisement out. Just like this last November, I put an advertisement out, spent thousands of dollars on a postcard that is totally, basically eliminated, invalidated, just because of the waiver termination. And I'm afraid that it will recur itself when they come to April 1st. How am I going to advertise for something in April 1st? Do I advertise for webinar or do I web advertise for live or what? I cannot even ask the speaker to make their commitment if I don't have the plan. And so that is the hardship that is created that no one in the board has mentioned. Maybe they don't understand, maybe they didn't hear about it, but I appreciate the effort of the DCA and the board trying to do. I mean, the waiver does help in crisis situation, but we already have COVID for over a year. 30 seconds. It should have been planned about long ago, but you know, we just cannot, I don't know. It is, there's a sense of urgency, but it seems like the urgency is only to the provider and not to the others. That's all the comment I can make. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And seeing no additional requests for comment, Dr. McLean, would you like me to close the panel? Yes, please. It is closed. And I'd like to just say um, that we have to be careful not to, uh, to uh, we have to be careful to compare apples to apples and um, not just look at uh, information from non-healing arts um, boards that may or may not be doing this um, because their approach to continuing ed is very different than a hands-on healing arts board, a hands-on board like ours. We also have to remember um, for those who um, we understand that inconvenience is a priority to some, but for the board, our priority is public protection first. And while it it is um, maybe taxing, uh, making changes. We have all had to be very flexible during COVID because we are not in control of a lot of things um, during this time. And um, we have to therefore just remember what our priority needs to be. It's not to expeditiously rush something so that we can appease what's more convenient when we need to um, make sure that there's competencies, there's quality control, there's a lot of moving parts that need to be in place before moving forward. forward. We don't wanna put the cart before the horse. Um, we understand that technology is, um, is uh, an inevitable part of our life, but we have to make sure that we do it in a manner that we are getting quality and we are moving forward with that as a priority. And we also need to be very careful that when we're looking at information that uh, particularly 
information put forth by an individual that we understand that that information may be um, suggested that it's everybody's opinion, but when it's less than 1% of the amount of chiropractors who are involved in it, and it, it, there are other chiropractors putting forth information that also reflects a, a, a different opinion, we have to keep that in perspective. Um, and that being said, um, I know that there's a motion on the floor from Dr. Paris. I'd like to move to vote, uh, call have, for the vote. Can I, um, can I have one further point of discussion? Um, one, I, I know, I just want to mention, you know, that I, the comments regarding I, the time frame and this ending in March and, you know, like expiring in April. And I just want to remind everyone though, that the governor's office has, has been, you know, really responsive and and kept pace with the rising and falling trends with with COVID, and it, that includes, you know, this particular extension. So, um, you know, I, I I believe that, you know, we we can put trust and faith that, you know, um, if 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 this uh, carries on or if the pandemic were to worsen, that you know, it's it's probably likely that we would see another extension so i don't i don't want to frame this from the context that it's a um you know uh do or die date um and because we we don't know yet that's just what's out there currently but i just want to remind everyone that the governor's office has been very responsive in dca and in the waivers so um and then the other thing too is that um you know i've noticed in in the community of uh, continuing education providers that that there's ongoing face to face meetings that are planned, and so um, you know I know there's a safety concern here, and and that's stated quite a bit. But we are seeing a lot of the uh, you know continuing education providers you know move forward with their plans to do their face to face. So I want to remind everyone too that um, you know those are it looks like those are going to happen. So. And the third thing is we received some uh, email public comment in advance of the meeting and I was hoping um, we'd be able to maybe get those out while we're uh, while we're you know in this issue. Maybe Kristen can just summarize those comments that we received via email in advance of the meeting. Is that possible? Yes, I'd be happy to summarize the four comments that were received. Um, the first two comments were the ones that were mentioned by Marcus Strutz um, in support of uh, making um, Zoom an option for live CE, as, as well as with some um, language that he was presenting to the board for review. Um, the second comment from Marcus Strutz was um, a bullet point list of why Zoom should be a permanent option for live CE. We also received two other written comments um, from members of the public. One, let me navigate it two or three here. Let's see. The first one was um, expressing some concerns about online learning for continuing education, um, specifically concerns regarding um, cheating during online learning and having someone um, take the place of someone else to complete the online CEs. Um, the person cited um, driving tests as an example of um, why things are done in person. And the other public comment that was received um, was in support of all continuing education programs to be virtual except for adjustive technique. And it was also in support of including basic life support course every two years as a requirement. And that's the four comments that were received in writing. Dr. Adams. Yes, or, or sorry, Dr. McLean this is board yeah. counsel. Um, yes. I believe I heard Dr. Adams make a substitute motion. So I think there's really two options here. Um, one, uh, if Dr. Adams is willing to withdraw that substitute motion. Otherwise, I think the board needs to take a vote on the substitute substitute motion that Dr. Adams made prior to taking up the main motion. 
OK. Um, Dr. Adams, would you um, be willing to withdraw your mo Well, you didn't. You said a substitute motion, but you didn't um, complete that. So I don't know what that was and whether or not you would be willing to withdraw that. Well, I, I think in the interest of, uh, uh, you know, of, of everybody's, you know, opinions on the board, I'm happy to, uh, you know, to state what it is that I was uh, commenting on. I, I, I have, you know, you know, uh, there's been lots of discussion. I wanted to just clarify, I never said that the, um, that what I was suggesting was the only pathway. It was a pathway. And from my understanding, um, a more uh, efficient pathway to get this one single issue resolved. Nobody's saying to do away um, with, you know, you know, that Zoom is going to take the place of or synchronous learning is going to take the place of face to face contact. It's an option, and I think it should be an option. And I think other boards are doing it. Other chiropractors, if you want to say, to use your comment, uh, Chairman McLean, apples to apples, there are many other boards that are doing synchronous learning and have addressed this issue long before we have. So um, I guess so I'm not inclined to remove be, my motion. My motion would be, as motion? I stated, that my motion, as I stated, would be that that we. Um, uh, address the issue of distance learning that we define it more specifically because that's what got us into this concern um, over Zoom being accepted or not is that we define distance learning as asynchronous self-paced learning um, instruct the staff to write regulatory language of that effect and that addresses this one issue the CE committee can meet and address the greater and more long-term uh, uh, issues that it has already been doing for the past eight years and continue that process because I don't think it's going to be done on February 8th um, personally having served on that committee. So that would be my motion that we uh, instruct the staff to use regulatory language to further specifically define distance learning as asynchronous um, self-paced learning and uh, come back and convene and have the, the whole board vote on that so that this can get to the OAL and address that one issue going forward and allow these providers and stakeholders to have that choice given to them. Okay, so I don't hear a second on your motion. This is Dr. Daniels. I actually had a few comments. Um, we were talking about, you know, apples to apples, and um, I do consider uh, medical doctors and nurses to be in the healing arts, and they're currently doing their education. Uh, you know, there are a lot, quote unquote, live uh, via interactive Zoom. Um, and there's other concerns besides uh, just the, the COVID aspect. You know, the world has changed. And to address some of the other issues, costs of travel, um, some people are more concerned about exposure and concerned about protecting their patient base, which is the stakeholders as far as being in contact with perhaps people that they don't know, uh, say another colleague, they don't know where they've been, uh, and then bringing that back to their patients is a concern. Um, so I do agree with Dr. Adams that the quote unquote live needs to be uh, uh, redefined for the, the safety and for everybody. And then, what it also allows is for a greater community of uh, scholars and colleagues to communicate in a live fashion that would be prohibitive um, from different areas of the state per se. If you know someone was unable to travel due to you know a pregnancy, a work injury, or COVID, et cetera. 
So let me just um, interject a couple of things there, Dr. Daniels. I'm not sure if you're aware. There are there are exemptions regarding health, number one, to address that for you. Um, and number two, we're not, um, we already have in place that there, um, the ability uh, to participate in, in distance learning, it's not an all or none. There's already, already a distance learning, uh, the ability to, to do at least a portion of it uh, via distance learning. Um, and um, so that is always an option. Um, additionally, um, when we talk about contact with other colleagues and, and uh, the concerns, um, I'd have to ask the question for all of the providers that um, are stating that um, who treat patients who have no idea where their patients are, are coming from that um, there's no difference there in what when you're treating patients, particularly for those who treat uh, quite a bit, you know, a great number of patients, you have no idea, but in your everyday life as well. Um, one of the reasons why the governor's office and the, uh, the, the CDC and public health um, has advised to continue to take protective measures, but to move towards being back in person. Um, restaurants are open, um, uh, public facilities are open with the precautions, the appropriate precautions put in place. It's still, um, you're just as safe as doing any of those other everyday things that you do. Um, so, it, I'd just like to offer that to you as well or and to those listening as well. Um, so I want to get this right, Mr. Hurtada. Um, I, I mean, before I ask Mr. Hurtada, so Dr. Daniels, are you seconding his motion or just discussing and commenting or and yeah. Or yeah, I didn't get the last part. Uh, no, don't worry about it. Just the first two options um, are what I'm asking. Could you please uh, restate it for clarity? Are you, I'm just trying to be clear on um, your comments. Are your comments in just being offered as part of the discussion, bringing forth discussion, or are you seconding the motion? Well, I'm concerned with it simply going to the the subcommittee that it um, that other people on the board will not be able to participate in the uh, conversation. So maybe you can explain to me if that is the case or not. So when you, it becomes a little layered. So depending on what the mo the the motion that goes forth, the everything that's discussed in the committee is brought for back back to the uh, to the full board to vote on prior to moving forward on any regulatory, uh, completing the regulatory language. Um, what, you know, we could spend a whole lot of time on defining something or we can send it back to the committee to spend that time on the definition and working the details out because it's something that has to be worked out with legal and with, uh, with um, staff as well. So that's where the that's the committee's job. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Let 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 me interject. Let me interject here again. Let let me let me ask it this way. Are we in agreement that distance learning is asynchronous and self-paced learning? Simple question to the board. Can I, this is Dr. Paris. So uh, one of the, uh, so like just using the example of the discussion we're having right now, 
Um, you're saying asynchronous and Dr. Daniels said, you know, basic synchronous, I believe. And those are two separate things and could both be defined as distance learning. So I think that's, you know, it's just one example of how weedy this discussion is and it needs time to work through the specific parameters of the type of CE that that potentially can fall under and the language that's necessary to really define it, um, you know, very distinctly and appropriately. Um, and so th that was why I thought it was best served in in a committee where it can have all the discussion and a board members can, um, you know, attend the committee meeting. And I think we'd have a robust discussion with our stakeholders also, um, you know, if this is properly agendized in a CE meeting um, where it can have really focused, conver you know, discussion. And so that, that, that was the intent. But I wanted to point out that we're saying asynchronous and synchronous all in the same discussion and I think we might be conflating. Right. Yeah. I mean they they they're both not face to face, right? They're both not live face to face, of course. So um but I mean those are the things that I think we have to work out in the language. And I think it, I think it would be a little bit rushed for us to um define some language here or direct staff to um you know build regulations around uh you know, build regulations around, you know, language that maybe is a little bit vague. So here, well, with, hearing what you're I guess, saying, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I, 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 guess, we'll you I guess, I guess for me, having been at those several of those meetings, it's, it's pretty clear. I think we have some very smart people that have attended this meeting. They know the difference between synchronous and asynchronous or self-paced learning that can be stopped and started, um, which is what distance learning is. Uh, I understand having taught CE courses via Zoom, uh, the difference between synchronous and asynchronous and self-paced. Um, it's a set beginning, a set end of time. There's a FaceTime interaction. And I just think that we're we're kicking this can down the road so um, so let me just let me just interject my here. Motion. Okay, please, let let please, let's please, please allow me to finish wait. My comment. I I will, please but I'm going to, to finish my comment. I'm I'm going to allow you if you'll just listen. Put forth your motion and it. let's see and and then let's continue because this discussion becomes circular and going round and round and round. We don't need to poll each and every person about individual um, definitions without allowing them to have the time to consider it. If you want those definitions, then that's something that we we should bring back or allow them to, to go back and um, uh, revisit. I would like for you to put your motion forward. Let's see if it's second. Let's vote on it so that we can move on. It is now 344 and we don't want to get stuck in a circular conversation forever. Let's make a motion so that we can move forward. Now, yes, I, 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 I have put my motion forward and I think that the staff is fully qualified to create the regulatory language, which then can be Understood. brought back to the is there a second to his motion? So, I, yeah, my motion. If it gets seconded, wonderful. I second. Who is that? Uh, sorry, Dr. Daniels. Thank you, Dr. Daniels. Okay, so it sounds like there's been robust discussion here. Um, so the motion that we're currently voting on is Dr. Adams' motion. And Dr. Adams, before we proceed to vote on your motion, can you please just st restate that for the record, please? One more time, Mr. Hurtado. Please, please. He said to restate uh, you're breaking your motion. Up. What, what did you he ask said, me? He said to restate your motion. 
Could you restate it one more time for the record, Dr. Adams? Yes, sir. Uh, my motion was uh, to instruct the staff to more specifically define. Okay, now you're breaking up. Dr. Adams, you're breaking up terribly. In distance learning. Can Dr. Adams, can you hear? How about now? Now we can about, hear you. Can you state it now? brief? Can you state it briefly? So, because you're breaking up, we want to catch it. Yes, to instruct the staff to create the regulatory language specifically relative to distance learning being asynchronous and self-paced learning to clear up the ambiguity in the regulation. Okay, so he restated his motion. It was seconded by Dr. Daniels. Dr. Paris, can you call for the vote on this current motion? Or Dr. Uh, Paris, excuse me, my apologies. Dr. Dion McLean? No. Dr. David Paris, no. Dr. Lawrence Adams? Is this my motion? Yes, it is. Yes. Ms. Jeanette Cruz? No. Dr. Pamela Daniels? Yes. Mr. Raphael Sweet? No. The motion is denied. Now we'll move to the motion from Dr. Paris. Will you restate your motion briefly? And we'll move for the vote. Uh, I move to uh, send this issue to the Licensing and Continuation Continuing Education Committee. And I second that motion. Demo, <laughs> second that motion. Sorry. I call for the vote. Dr. Dion McLean. Yes. Dr. David Paris. Yes. Dr. Lawrence Adams. Yes. Ms. Jeanette Cruz. Yes. Dr. Pamela Daniels. Yes. Mr. Raphael Sweet. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That being said, that should conclude agenda item number nine. And in lieu of the time factor, I'd like to skip over the break um, at this time and move to directly into agenda item number 10 the election of the board officers. And I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Hurtado for that. So at the last meeting, we had nominees uh, for chair, vice chair and secretary. Um, Ms. Walker, do you have the, the nominees that were presented at the last board meeting? I don't have that information before me. I have it. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Dr. McLean. Dr. McLean, let's let's proceed with just the chair nominees first. The nominees for chair were Dr. David Paris and Dr. Dion McLean. Okay. So according to the board's procedural manual, each nominee will be afforded the opportunity to make a, a brief statement of, of qualifications. So uh, Dr. Paris, would you like to proceed? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, well, I believe that my qualification to serve as chair uh, are my years of experience in the field in uh, multidisciplinary clinics and private practice and my involvement with the community of DCs at large through uh, state and national association involvement in many committees and leadership roles there 
Um, I've also previously served as chair um, two years ago in the term preceding Dr. McLean's term. And I also believe that uh, in consideration of electing me as chair, I think I would just like to make a statement about my leadership style. And I believe that if elected, I think one area that would really improve um, the our board's ability to move things forward and is is what I'd really like to do is reach out to all the board members. And I know with COVID that's been very difficult, um, but I'd really like to uh, try and align people into areas where they have strong personal interest or aptitude or and where they would like to serve. And I've always found that if people are placed into positions and areas where they have a, a strong a strong preference and, and a strong interest, um, that there's synergy there. And it just seems like the, the work of, of the board uh, seemingly can move forward at, at, a, at a pace that that we'd find appropriate. And, uh, and so I hope to uh, secure your confidence and, and your vote uh, for chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Paris. Dr. McLean, uh, you may present your statement of qualifications. Thank you, Mr. Hatada. Um, I would like to say that after careful consideration, I would like to withdraw from being considered for chair at this time. Okay, since you and Dr. Paris were the only two nominees, then uh, Dr. Paris is unopposed, so he is the new chair of the board. Congratulations. Dr. Uh, McLean, can you present the nominees for vice chair? Nominees for vice chair were uh, Dr. Lawrence Adams and Dr. David Paris. Dr. Adams, would you like to take a few minutes to present your statement of qualifications? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Hurtado. Um, I'm excited for the opportunity to uh, to serve on this board. It's been just over a year now, and surprisingly, I'm I'm the third um, ranking member on the board, which shows our youth, but also shows our um, our commitment and and our desire to uh, to serve. Um, and uh, a lot of good energy on this board, a lot of good, robust conversations. Um, in my opinion, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about uh, putting forward our ideas that are what we feel the best for the public. Um, and, and then when it's all said and done, that we support each other. And I look forward to, uh, if I'm elected uh, to, to the vice chair position, to working closely with uh, Dr. Paris and um, learning from him, a seasoned, um, not only a former chair, chairman of this board, but uh, someone I've known for many years as a, a great server to this profession in various uh, capacities in our state uh, and national um, agencies. So I think I um, would be a, a great uh, understudy in a sense to learn and perhaps someday step forward and be the chair um, in a future time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Adams. Dr. McLean, did I hear you? The other nominee was Dr. Paris for vice chair? Yep. Okay, yes. well, since he's the new chair, uh, Dr. Adams will be unopposed here, so he is the new vice chair. Can you give me the nominees for secretary, please? It's just Mr. Raphael Sweet. Mr. Sweet, would you like to take a few minutes to present your statement of qualifications for the board? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll be very brief. Um, similar to uh, Dr. Adams' um, remarks, uh, I've been on the uh, board for approximately a year. Um, in addition to my interest in the field of chiropractic and uh, my dedication to the board, I think that my background as a lawyer would, would serve me well and serve the board well as secretary. So um, looking forward to the opportunity. Thank you, sir. 
Okay, so your newly elected uh, board officers are Chair Dr. Paris, Vice Chair Dr. Adams, and Secretary Mr. Sweet. Dr. McLean, we can, I think we can transition to agenda yes. item number 11. So I'd like to move on to agenda item number 11 and turn it over to your new chair. Dr. Paris, are you there? Uh, thank you. Yeah, sorry. I had to get off mute. Get organized here. Um, well, thank you very much. Thanks for uh, your confidence. And uh, um, I don't know if I should... If <laughs> <laughs> running unopposed, but thank you very much for allowing me and uh, I hope to serve you well. And um, I would just say, I, I really truly believe what I said earlier. And I, I think, you know, I'm basically uh, have a open policy about, and, and I would concur with Dr. Adams statement about, it's really about serving to um, your best ability and bringing forward your thoughts and your ideas and, and your comments and your suggestions and and that's what really makes the board the board and uh, um, I think meetings like today and the issue previous that should um, probably happen more often and uh, we should always have uh, debate and points uh, to make that aren't always in agreement and that's fine and that's good and that's good for the public and it's good for the board so thank you very much and um, I appreciate it and I look forward to speaking with you all personally soon. You may take over the meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Paris, as the new chair, you may uh, thank continue you. on and take over. Thank you. Um, so we can move on to agenda item number 12. Uh, review and approval of the December 16, 2021 board meeting minutes. And so we are asked to make a motion to approve the December 20, December 16th, 2021 board meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve December 16th uh, meeting minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Raphael Sweet, second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, moderator, can we open this agenda item for public comment? This is the moderator. We've opened the Q&A panel. If you'd like to comment on this item, please click on the Q&A icon on the screen, type comment into the text field, and submit that to our panelists. Hearing none, can we close? Hearing the, none, I will close the panel. It is closed. And Mr. Hurtado, um, can you advise me here? I was previously calling the roll call vote. Do I need to pass that on? Uh, it's after. I, love. I would assume yes. Um, we lost you, Mr. Hurtada, if you can't hear. Uh, if can you think you're. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's at your discretion, whoever you want to appoint. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be another board member. It could be a board staff, if you like. Um, okay. Um, Kristen, would you mind calling the vote, please, for us? Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Dion McLean. I think she's switching devices, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip her and go uh, to Dr. Paris. Approve. Dr. Adams. Approve. Ms. Cruz. Approve. Dr. Daniels. Approve. Mr. Sweet. Yes, approve. And Dr. McLean.
Dr. McLean, if you can hear us, you are muted. She might be having some issues with her secondary connection as well. Uh, Dr. McLean is unable to unmute herself, but she relayed to me that I think I got is, it. Oh, there she is. Oh, okay, McLean? there you go. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for um, your patience. Okay, motion passes. Um, let's move on to agenda item number 13, ratification of approved license applications. And I'm sorry, did I hear somebody? So as background staff has already reviewed and confirmed that the applicants uh, on the list in the agenda of approved applications for initial doctor of chiropractic licenses have met all statutory and regulatory requirements for licensure. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to ratify. I'll, I'll motion to ratify. Thank you. I'll second Dr. McLean. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes. Hearing no discussion, a moderator, can we please open this agenda item for public comment? This is the moderator. We've again opened the Q&A panel. If you'd like to comment on this motion, please click on the Q&A icon on your screen, type comment into the text field, and submit that to our panelists. And not seeing any requests, would you like me to close the panel? Please, thank you. It is closed. And Ms. Walker, can you please call for the vote? Sure. Dr. McLean? Yes. Dr. Paris? Yes. Dr. Adams? Yes. Okay. Ms. Cruz? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. And Mr. Sweet? Yes. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. And let's move on to agenda item 14, ratification of approved continuing education providers. Looks like it was a brief one. There's two as background. Staff has already reviewed and confirmed that the above CE providers, provider applications meet all the regulatory requirements for approval. Can I get a motion to ratify? I'll make a motion to ratify. It's Dr. McLean. Thank you. Is there a second? Dr. Adams, I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, moderator, can you please open this agenda item for public comment? This is the moderator. Our Q&A panel is again open. If you'd like to comment on this motion, please click on the Q&A icon on your screen, type comment into the text field, and submit that to our panelists. <clears throat> I'm seeing no requests. Would you like me to close the panel? Please, thank you. It is closed. And Ms. Walker, would you please call for the vote? Yes. Dr. McLean? Yes. Dr. Paris? Yes. Dr. Adams? Yes. Ms. Cruz? 
Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. Mr. Sweet? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And moving on to agenda item 15, review discussion and possible action on the board's 2022 meeting calendar and the scheduling of a strategic planning session. And uh, Ms. Walker, uh, do you mind going over this overview with the board on what we need here? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to provide a little background information. Uh, Thank you. So, so as I mentioned during my report, um, the board staff has been working with um, the department's solid training and planning solutions um, to kickstart the board's next strategic plan. Um, the board typically uh, completes a new strategic plan every th three years. However, um, due to some board member vacancies and the ongoing COVID pandemic, we have had to postpone the development of the strategic plan. But now that we're um, almost fully appointed and SOLID has um, resumed their strategic planning facilitation services, um, the board is ready. So the preliminary work is being completed right now by board staff and then we'll begin the environmental scan and analysis process, which we expect to take um, from February until May of 2022. Following that um, process, um, SOLID's gonna compile a, an analysis of um, what they gather from the stakeholder survey, the board member interviews, staff focus group, um, and gather all that information so that the board can discuss it during a um, one day strategic planning session. Um, and at this meeting, what we're asking the board to do is to um, look at your calendars and if we can schedule that strategic planning session. There's a based on the, the time frame, we're looking at summer of 2022. So the options um, or what staff is suggesting that the board consider as options for scheduling that one day strategic planning session is to either make the August 2022 board meeting a two day meeting with regular board business occurring on Thursday, August 18th followed by the full day strategic planning session on Friday, August 19th. Or um, if that doesn't work, uh, the board could also consider scheduling an additional full day meeting in either June or July of 2022, um, specifically focused on conducting that strategic planning session. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to the board for discussion. Thank you. Is there any discussion from the board members? If I can uh, put my two cents in, um, I would prefer to uh, not do two days back to back, but to try to do something as they suggest in June or July. Um, but that's my two cents. Dr. Adams, would you like to make a motion to that effect? I think I'd, ra I'd I'd rather wait to hear some discussion from other people. I don't want to, you know. I mean, I'm I'm going to make do with whatever the, the the group does, but I'm just putting in my two cents. So I don't think I'm ready to make a motion yet. Thank you. Sure. But this is uh, Dr. Daniels. I'm fine with doing two days in a row. I'm fine with uh, June or July. However, I have certain dates that I'm uh, will not be uh, available. So. Um, depending on what other board members can do. Um, my only concern is uh, my availability, so. Okay. Yeah, it's Raphael Sweet. I think um, my preference would be um, similar to Dr. Adams as well, assuming that we'll still be doing things remotely um, through the summer. Um, I don't know if that's the case or not, but because um, I'm in Los Angeles and if there's travel involved, I would prefer that they be on consecutive days. And if not, then I would prefer that it be um, separate uh, meetings, if that makes sense. That's a great point because we, yeah, that's a great point, Rafael. That does make sense. If I may clarify a point, uh, Dr. Paris. Yes. Yep. Um, so based on the um, the governor's uh, current order that expires um, March 31st, um, the idea is that we'd probably be um, at this time um, 
resuming an in-person meeting and that that was um and thank you mr sweet for bringing that up that was the um, intention behind a two-day meeting was that we were anticipating there would be travel involved and it would be easier for all parties um to have uh, two days back to back with one um, trip as opposed to making two trips for two separate meetings but um, both options are um, certainly available i just thank you for mentioning that i did want to point that out Any other comments, discussion, preferences? I guess it's Dr. Daniels. I mean, if we're in person, I uh, sort of agree with um, doing the two days back to back so that it's, you know, one consolidated trip. I concur with that. And in that, I mean, maybe that. August 18th and 19th makes the most sense. We've already set that date aside, which I know I have. Can I make a motion that we plan the strategic planning session on August 18th, the day before our 19th? BCE meeting. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Mr. Hurtado, we open this for public comment? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay, thank you. Moderator, can we please open this for public comment? This is the moderator. We've again opened the Q&A panel. If you'd like to make a comment on this motion, please click on the Q&A icon on your screen, type comment into the text field, and submit that to our panelists. And not seeing any requests, would you like me to close the panel? Please, thank you. It is closed. And Ms. Walker, would you please call for the vote? Yes. Uh, Dr. McLean? Yes. Dr. Paris? Yes. Dr. Adams? Yes. Ms. Cruz? Yes. Dr. Daniels? Yes. And Mr. Sweet? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. So um, that was some of the easiest meeting planning we've done. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. Um, 18th, 19th, and uh, it's a Thursday, Friday in August. Um, thank you. More details forthcoming. And I believe we are done. Let me see. Yes. Into item 16. Chairman Paris, I had a quick question. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, Ms. Walker, I had a question regarding um, the April 22nd meeting, uh, since that will be after the the waiver, is it anticipated that will be in person or are we going to assume that's going to be um, on Zoom because of the closeness to the date and not knowing what might be happening? And logistically, that might be too close. Um, I will check with the department on the latest guidance. Um, as far as I'm aware, it may be an in-person meeting or it may be, it could be a teleconference meeting, but we would have to comply with Bagley Keene and disclose the board members' locations um, at, e for, at each meeting location. Um, but I will look into that and provide the board with an update. 
I'm just thinking of log logistics, uh, travel time, if depending on where we hold the meeting. Thank you. And uh, agenda item 16, uh, public comment for items not on the agenda. Moderator, can we please open for public comment? This is the moderator. We've opened the Q&A panel. If you'd like to comment on items not listed on today's agenda, please click on that Q&A icon, type comment into the text field, and submit that to our panelists. Not seeing any requests, would you like me to close the panel? Yes, please. It is closed. And moving on to agenda item 17. Future agenda items. Any discussion? Any future agenda items from the board? Hearing none, moderator, can we please open agenda items 17, future agenda items for public comment? This is the moderator. The Q&A panel is open. If you'd like to make suggestions for future agenda items, please click on that Q&A icon, type comment into the text field, and submit that to our panelists. And it's looking like no requests at this time. Would you like me to close it? Please. Thank you. It is closed. And moving to uh, agenda item number 18. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? It's a draw file suite and move to adjourn the meeting. And a second. Nick Cruz, a second. Thank you very much. Did I hear another comment? It is 419 PM. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I look forward to uh, spending more time with you in the near future and discussing with you. Thank you for putting up with the uh, bandwidth limitations today. And I'd like to thank Dr. McLean for her leadership over the last year before we adjourn. It's uh, challenging during COVID and, uh, you know, being chair of the board and having no face-to-face -face meetings is, uh, and all the issues that came up with COVID for our licensees was surely a challenge. And thank you for your hard work and dedication and uh, hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McLean.